unwrapping a Christmas present. These things have been drying for about four days, and uh, I'm real impressed with how the the uh, the hardener worked with the enamel. It's uh, very very hard. Love it, love it, love it. So now we're starting the reassembly process, putting this back together. I've already replaced my two bad studs that were at the bottom. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this, which is our um, transom seal. You notice how it's flat and round on one side? It's supposed to be round all the way around. So we'll put the new one on and we'll use uh, bellows adhesive to uh, hold it in place. So, I'm going to get everything lined out exactly the way it needs to be, so we'll be good to go. Uh, the, the paint is dry, got my sticker on, uh, got everything laid out on the bench. Uh, I'm really nervous, but uh, I'm going to tackle this and, and see if we can get it done right. Um, the little stainless thing goes in nice and neatly here. We're going to use a little bit of 3-in-1 oil just to make sure everything stays nice and greased up. Got my uh, transom seal. Uh, so everything is uh, ready to go. I'm going to take these down and take this down and uh, we'll uh, put it together and see how it turns out. As you can see, I've got the gimbal ring on and the, uh, the housing uh, here with the new stainless piece shoved up through there. This was a real pain. You've got to have two people to do this because you've got to have somebody on this side holding it and you've got to actually get the nuts and uh, the washers in on this side. And make sure you have your steering arm the correct way. We went and referred to the, uh, the pictures just to make sure. And then now what we're going to do is I'm going to tighten down this nut to pull the stainless steering pin up in there until we get basically, uh, they said 0 0.002 to 0 0.0010 uh, clearance on this bottom piece. So also before that, we're going to put in the, uh, the pin that goes through here. So therefore, it'll retain all the, uh, and it's not going up at a bind. So that's where we are so far. Um, it's pretty simple, a little scary though, like I said, but you can see the, the steering arm is actually turning our, our uh, gimbal. So good to go so far. This is one little hiccup we ran into was getting this lower pin in that holds this lower part of the, the gimbal is it has a cotter pin that goes through and you can see that it's got really tight clearances on either side. So you have to bend it at an angle to get it in there and it's the exact same size of the hole. So what we did is we actually put a, a, a pair of vice grips about an eighth of an inch out, and then I used my chisel and my hammer and just hit the vice clip grips so they would go in just little bits at a time. We also used beforehand this little red piece of wire to go in and make sure that you're lined up before you go hammering on this. So it goes all the way through, we made sure it was lined up, and then we hammered in the uh, this uh, cotter pin and then bent it over on the other side. It only sticks out about, oh, a quarter to a half inch on one and about an eighth inch on the other. So you have to make sure that you bend it over nice and good. So now we're gonna go up here and finish tightening the, the uh, steering pin to its proper clearance. One gimbal ring installed. Um, this isn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be, guys. Um, I got the steering arm on and it's, uh, it's actually torqued down to 60 foot-pounds. We've got the U-bolt here. We used our big trusty uh, torque wrench. I know this is way overkill, but it works. We've got our U-bolt installed and new lock. That you always use a new U-bolt whenever you're rebuilding these because you want to. It's it stretched out. And these are down to. I have these to 50 foot pounds, and then we'll take it to 55 once it's had time to sit and stretch, and uh, you know crush some of this paint. So this thing is actually uh, pretty close to ready to be going back on the boat. Um, and then we'll install everything else while it's on the boat. So that would be the new water hose, the, the everything. I don't want this wallowing around on the bench and having to uh, take a chance of uh, scratching it. So we want to put it back on and we'll rebuild it while it's on the boat. But at least the ring's installed. It's done. I'm happy. All right, so we're taking the new uh, uh, transom seal here. We're going to put it in the groove. And what I'm using is bellows adhesive, which will hold it in. And I used 5200 last time. And that was the biggest mistake I ever made. It did not work well whatsoever. So I'm going to just put this around this. Also, to miss a spot. Need to make sure this thing has a seam right here. I'm going to put that at the top because if something ever happens and that seam starts leaking, 
that's the above water area so and I can already tell you this is going to be pain in the butt alright I'm putting on a little bit of 4200 you guys remember in the in the glass tron I used 5200 but in hindsight I wanted if you ever needed to take that transom assembly off it's going to be very difficult it's doable but in this I'm just putting 4200 on here because it is removable and technically you don't put any on this on here at all because that's the way they did it from the factory so it's just a little added insurance and J overkill um, make sure it's perfect and then we're going to go put them in the holes also before we put it in here all right I think that's it all right so I'm installing the new trim senders uh, it's not too terribly hard but there's a little hole up here in the top that you have to fit these and if you look here it's got two little um, halves that have to go together you want to make sure because the trim senders say port and starboard on them so those go up in there and they actually just kind of create a little seal up here in the hole I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just right up in that hole. And uh, then we've got, I'm going to go get the little clamp. It's this little clamp right here. It goes over those and holds them into place. Sometimes it's easier to. There we go. All right, I'm, in, I'm putting together my uh, pull, gear puller. Now, some of your gear, pull, gear pullers will come with these t teeth turned around backwards but this is the way you need it because if you imagine here's your gimbal bearing these need to go inside and then you tighten down this piece and what it does is it fills out the, the fingers to grab hold that's the way we can jerk it out so what I'm doing is I'm just getting this kind of set up to where I can put it in the hole and this almost requires four hands to do You gotta adjust this just right to where they're they'll go in and grab hold. Okay, and then what you do, you take your slide hammer and you wanna come back. And of course it doesn't want to come off on camera. There it goes. Just like that. Alright, see, now there's a little hole right here. You can see it? That is lined up with your grease fitting on the outside of the uh, boat. So when we put the new one in, we need to make sure that this grease fitting is exactly lined up when we tap it in. So what I'm going to do now, as you can see, we've got a lot of pookie in there. I'm going to scrape all that out, clean it up good. We've had the other um, uh, gimbal bearing sitting in the, uh, the freezer for like two hours. And what that does is it slightly um, it makes this smaller, so it will slide in a little bit better. So I'm going to clean up a little bit now. I'm messy. Okay, I uh, got the gimbal housing on, hammered the, uh, the uh, gimbal bearing in and got it full of grease. Um, trim cinders are in. So on with the gimbal housing, let me show you what we got done so far. Um, the shift cable, very simple to install. You saw how I put the, uh, the bellows on it. 
and it's we're probably going to adjust it uh, to depend on you know how far it needs to be out to go to the bell housing and I so I have not put it on the um, the, the thing yet I've not put bellows adhesive or the clamp so we'll do that here in a little bit um, we've got the hose here the trim senders come down you need to make sure and put your trim sender uh, retaining clamp on there okay this little piece right here this is the the fill hose that they actually goes to the reservoir for the gear oil for the outdrive that is very very hard to put on and there's a plastic little clamp here that, that they actually snap in you need to make sure and put that on there nice and neat this was very very difficult to get in here but if you take your time a little bit of lithium grease it slips on perfectly fine so so far so good um, we're going to get the bellows on next, which is uh, basically just putting the bellows adhesive all the way around here, slipping it on, and then using my long screwdriver that actually has a, a, a flex shaft in it to, to tighten the, um, the uh, clamp. So I'm going to go get the bellows, glue it on, show you how that works. All right, so we've got the, uh, this is kind of loosely on here. Um, when you put the, bell, the, the, uh, the uh, bellows. bellows on there, this actually has a top and a bottom labeled on the back, which I didn't see until after about 30 minutes into it. So you glue it in there. You put we put two layers of or a layer of the uh, bellows adhesive and let it dry on both sides, and then put a big liberal amount on there for lubrication to get it on. And then you take and and um, and then adjust. Or there on this side, there's the uh, the clamp where you uh, take your long screwdriver that kind of looks like this, and it's flexible. So therefore you can get it up in there and it's a 5 16 inch ratchet or socket in the end. You just put it up in there like that and then that's how you tighten it. Pretty simple. Uh, you just got to make sure you keep those, um, those uh, clamps in the right spot so that way you're able to get to them fairly easy. And then this, the bellows, uh, the bellows itself has to come over the lip, which means you have to actually bend it and bring it in. And then once it snaps over, we're going to put a ring in it with this special driver tool. So the ring goes in here like this, and then we're going to use just a board to kind of tap it in. It actually has a, a shaft that you're supposed to use with it, but a board works just as good. And we're going to put a little bit of grease on there, so that way it goes in nice and neat. Other than that, it's going along pretty easy. Um, we're going to then take our hinge pins and reinstall them. Call it a day. I really hate that I keep jumping ahead like this and not videotaping, but to be honest with you, this is kind of like putting things back together. and. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only things that are kind of weird is there's a tapered insert that goes inside this this water hose right here, and you want to make sure that that's. They said that leave about an eighth to a quarter inch of rubber sticking kind of flared out, which honestly didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, you got to put your little washer and your nut for your shift cable. Um, per the instructions uh, somebody had posted, I pulled the shift cable out, and this is just the housing that's going into there. So that way, if you ding it up or something like that, you don't mess up your shift cable. You'll actually slide your shift cable in when you're ready for adjustment. And there's a tool that you got to use to be able to do all this, which I'll show you guys later. The little ring right there that retains the bellows slips in very easily with your uh, little circular white pound-in tool. And honestly, it pushes in pretty easy. You just got to use that pound-in tool for the last, oh, I'd say eighth of an inch. Um, we went in here and put on the trim cinders. You start in the middle for adjustment, and then once you get the engine running, you're good to go. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to double check our, our torques on the U-bolt up here. Oh, and look, i got one little nick. I don't know if you can see it or not. One little nick in this whole thing where we're putting it together with the paint. So, oh well. 